morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Uh, it is Monday morning. Uh, what is it? Um, May 11th. Wow. Can you believe that uh, time's going by so quick? And that we are uh, where we are at. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard to believe, I think. <laughs> so... Uh, I am here doing coffee with Shane this morning. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing well and um, you are finding time to be in the Word, finding time to be encouraged in the midst of all of uh, the craziest craziness of life. Uh, this morning we're going to take a little bit of a different approach. Um, as you can tell, I'm at home right now. Um, I actually uh, was uh, planning on being into the office, but just because of uh, some deliveries and personal stuff that we have going on at home. I needed to be here today. Um, and so I'm going to work from home as I have been for quite a while. But um, here recently, the uh, a few of us have gone back into the church office because we have plenty of space and um, it's just very, very safe to be there. So we've been doing it. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, so this morning, we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 3 and a couple of very familiar verses and a couple of verses that were just very encouraging to me. I found myself this morning, um, as things are ramping up with the um, the civilian or civil side, the, the citizen side of this whole um, stay-at-home order and the constitutional issues that are that are in in process here and the um, just the simple um, American freedoms issues that are that are being um, in my personal opinion you know walked on uh, for the for the the sake of what we're calling safety or, or protecting the people and and so I find myself torn in all of these things as many of you probably are as well um, and so in the midst of wrestling with that and, and, and you know, watching people struggle with that and hearing different people, different leaders doing different things, um, I want you to know that the elders and I are praying very, very uh, diligently about this particular issue. We talk about it pretty much every single week. What, what do we feel like God's calling us to do? What does the word say? How do we handle this particular situation? In this setting, and and we will continue to do that. And as God moves, we will uh, we will be sure to communicate um, that stuff with you. But I found myself this morning just struggling again, probably just being discouraged or frustrated um, in life and in with all of the chaos that's going around, and um, needed some encouragement and some refocus. And so um, when I need that. A lot of times I'll go and I'll grab a different proverb or I'll grab something out of Psalms. Um, and this morning as I was uh, praying and, and thinking through the text, Psalm chapter 3 uh, really grabbed me. And we're going to be in Psalm chapter 3 verses uh, 5 through 12 this morning um, as we consider what God might be calling um, us to be and do and, and how to live. And just seeking for some wisdom, seeking for some some encouragement and some focus on the Lord this morning. So uh, the text again is a Psalm or a Proverbs 3 starting in verse 5. Let me let me jump in and read that for you right now. Proverbs 3 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all you produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father the son in whom he delights. And there's more uh, as you go through there. I, I encourage you to read all of this particular proverb. It's got some great encouragement in there. But you know, when I when I look at the text, and part of what is is um, good for me is to remember some of these simple principles. For example, verse five: Trust the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your your own understanding. Um, as I think about the current culture, what we're dealing with right now in, in a daily environment, the current culture um, has all kinds of people's opinions flowing everywhere. We have experts who are disagreeing with one another. We have politicians who are disagreeing with one another. We have church people who are disagreeing with one another um, on how we should handle this. Uh, it, it is a constant and regular um, 
uh, conflict, information uh, change. Oh, hey, there's Gus. Good morning, Gus. Hey, buddy. You should say hi if you're going to get in the camera. Um, uh, so, it, you know, how, whose understanding do we lean on? Who's, what truth do we, do we hold on to at this point? Um, it, it just seems crazy. And so the, the, the real emphasis of this is to trust in the Lord, right? It's to put our trust in him. What are we trusting in, in him? It's that he's sovereign and he's all knowing and he's all powerful. He allowed this, these things to be for the purposes that only he knows. And, and the reality is that the, the, the church has something desperately important for us to learn out of this. This isn't, we're not just surviving this because um, because it's necessary to survive and, and all of these things are happening, um, because of just, you know, just because of all the evil in the world. Yes, there may be some elements to that, but God's a good God and there's stuff, there's stuff for us. Uh, there is stuff for us to learn in this process. Is the feed dropping out? Steve, I just saw that you, you said the, the, the feed. I've been having problems with the computer all morning trying to get online. Um, anybody else have any issues with, with the feed this morning? I'll give you just a second to respond here because I can always, I can switch over to my phone and try it on there if, if anybody else is having issues. Um, let me let me do that real quick. I'm gonna put on do not disturb. Anyone else having feed uh, connection issues today? Um, I'm not seeing any other responses. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. All right, well, we're going to keep going at this point. I'm not seeing too many other, at this point, people having issues. Hopefully, Steve, that it gets resolved. Um, hope, hopefully. Uh, anyway, so as we're thinking about this idea of trusting the Lord and leaning out on our own understanding, um, the, when we acknowledge him, when we put him first, right, he makes straight our paths. But when I got to verse 7 um, this morning, that's part of where my heart was really challenged. So be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And, and then verse 8, it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. And, and what's the healing to the flesh? What's the refreshing to our bones? It's when we're not... It's when we're not focused on our own wisdom, on our own ability to figure this stuff out, but we're fearing the Lord. Our respect, our reverence, our our, our worship of Him, our right view of Him. Um, when we have that view, when our hearts are postured or positioned towards Him accurately, according to what we see in Scripture, who He is in Scripture, that changes then how we live, and it brings healing to our flesh and refreshment to our bones. It's very interesting if you catch up, you, you got to back up just a little bit more into this uh, Proverbs 3 and you'll actually see very specific references to the steadfast love and faithfulness that are references towards God the Father and who he is. <laughs> Excuse me. Wow, too bad on live video. Can't edit some of that stuff out. Um, for whatever reason, I'm having all kinds of <clears throat> allergy issues or sinus issues. Um, and uh, it's been much more aggressive uh, here the last couple of days than it has been for weeks in advance. And other, I know other friends are struggling with that as well. So um, sorry about <clears throat> blasting y'all there. Um, but we have this picture of who God is, and it's it's actually references all the way back to the time in Genesis when Moses, it, it God introduces himself to Moses and said, this is who I am. And he uses that phrase, steadfast love, and 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 um, and that he's uh, faithful, and and other aspects of who he is. And so, when we think about fearing the Lord and it bringing healing and refreshing refreshment to our fle uh, to our bones, when we, when our eyes as His children are in the right spot, when we're focused on Him, when our hope is in Him, when when our trust is in Him. Then the physical things, the emotional things, the the worldly influence around us do not have the same effect on us. We don't we don't tend to um, stay in those moments of despair and struggle. And I know for me this morning, as I was reading this proverb, as I was wrestling with this, God really encouraged my heart to to remember that that He is in control. That that 
that these things that are going on are for his purposes and and especially for us as his children that god has something good intended uh for us to learn and to grow and to be out of this verse 9 says to honor the lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce and so as we give to god what out of in honor as we make our giving to him um, from our first fruits is, is that becomes our act of worship. And I think it's important to remember that, that that's part of the worship process is that we give him from, uh, what we have, not, not, we don't just, we don't just, uh, give him what's left over. And, and, um, the, you know, the widow's might is very interesting because when she gives, she gave all of the, she, she gave all she had. Um, her heart was so overwhelmed with love for the Lord that she gave everything. And so it's important to us to understand as we honor the Lord with what he's given us, as we receive who he is as our provider and we worship him with our with our whatever it is we have. He says the first fruits of our produce um, with our wealth, whatever that is that we're that God is asking us to give, whether it's time, money, uh, resource, whatever that is. We honor him with that and, and we worship him. Um, that's part of having a right view of who he is, right? It, it changes how we see him, how we respond. And then um, he finishes off with this idea of don't despise the discipline or be weary of his reproof because God's doing that because he loves us. And so for me today, this proverb was especially encouraging. I'm trusting in the Lord. Well, I wasn't. That was part of the problem. That's one of the reasons I was getting so frustrated. I found myself... Um, looking at what was, what was going on, looking at all of the different people, you know, everybody's different opinions and all the stuff that's been offered up for ideas and things that we should be thinking about. I found myself getting frustrated with that and realized that I was getting wrapped up in the worldly, earthly, temporal things and not really having my eyes on the Lord. And as I, as, as I went through the proverb today, being reminded that my worship is... My worship is about him. It's about what he's done. I, I, I worship him because of who he is, not because of how I feel about this. I, I, I look at the opportunities that he provides for us as a church to grow and to mature. And, and I give him the glory because he's a good father and he's doing what's best for us in this time. And so part of what I'm excited about in the next few weeks is um, as the elders are wrestling with how we're going to move forward in this process and what we want to challenge the church to be doing um, a as we go forward and being the church and and uh, doing our best to honor God in this time, I'm really excited for us to look at some creative ways to really become, be more engaged, more, uh, to be more actively fellowshipping with one another and building relationally uh, within the context of the church. And how do we do that in a way that's honoring to God as we go forward? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about that because I think God is using this particular time, this particular uh, moment in history to actually Ask the church in America, ask our church, our specifically our church here in this, in this particular, uh, in the state of Washington, if you will, and, and, and Idaho, wherever, wherever we're located, but to open our eyes and say, God, what do you have us to be? What are we learning from this? What should we be learning from this? And I think that's the challenge for us as a church this morning. What does it look like for you and for me to trust the Lord with all our hearts, to not lean on our own understanding, to get, to get in our worship of him, make sure that we're acknowledging him and everything, trusting him with our resources, trusting him with, with the, um, with, with how things are going, that, that we're not wise in our own eyes, that, that we're actually, that we're actually, uh, uh fearing God in what we do, what we say, how we live. And that out of that, when we see his discipline, when we see his provision, when we see him engage with the church, we are able to exercise what James tells us, and, and it's to consider pure joy. I actually had a brother encouraging me that with that this morning, and he says, you know, he reminds me of the text, pure joy, we're supposed to have pure joy in these things. That, And my response to it was, yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. Why? Because... I was not actually viewing things that way and going, man, God, this is such a great opportunity for me to grow. This is so cool. Thank you for giving me this. This is wonderful. I, that was not my attitude. It was not my heart. And then a bit, as I've been in Proverbs this morning, as, as I've been praying through this process, it's becoming 
my my heart. It's be it's actually part of what's welling up inside of me is that there is great hope, there is great joy, there is great anticipation of what God is going to do. We have not worn out our baptismal yet with with new converts. There are people in our neighborhoods who need to know the Lord. There are people in our homes, in our church, uh, in our church families, in our work environments that need to know the reality of the truth of the gospel. And we have great opportunity to do that. So how does it look like for you this day, for, for this morning, for this week, to trust the Lord with all your heart? Each of us have a different area. What does it look like for us today to not be wise in our own eyes, but to fear the Lord and to turn away or to shun evil? What does it look like for you and for me to give of our, to give of our wealth, to give of the first fruits of our produce, to, to trust God to be our provider and to give him what he's asking for us to give? And what does it look like for us to not be weary in his discipline, but to recognize that when God brings these opportunities for growth, he's doing it for the purposes of a loving father that wants the best for you and for me? What does that look like in your own life? I think for each of us, it's different. I know for me this today, it's to, it's again, to keep my eyes on him. It's to, it's to celebrate who he is. It's to give him the credit for all of the ways in which, um, he has opportunity to shine this week through the difficulties, through the challenges, through the moments that we may find ourselves struggling in. I hope that you, as you pursue the Lord this week, as you as you engage in the text and, and read your Bibles, that you will find hope and joy in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's there. It's just sometimes it's hard for us to hear it because of all the noise around us, all the chaos um, that we have ourselves wrapped up in. Can't tell you how many people I interact with because um, it's not very many right now in person, but a number of, of you have communicated with me and shared how how much you have to be careful with, with being online and reading Facebook and watching the news because you find yourself getting frustrated or angry or, uh, angry or, or experiencing anxiety and, and anxiousness that starts building up in your heart. So I want to in- encourage each and every one of you, watch the news if you need to, watch, you know, read your post, get your information from Facebook, get it from whatever, wherever, wherever you feel like you need to get your stuff. But make sure that your primary source, that your primary place of reading and focus and, and engagement is the Word of God. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Be not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and it will refresh uh, and, and refreshment to your bones. I believe that that is our encouragement for this week. How does that change how you would live? Um, I know for me today it changed my attitude, which unfortunately my attitude is always a difficult thing to, to handle, right? Because it's connected to emotions and it, it goes up and down and who knows. One minute you're great and the next minute you, you know, you're know you frustrated and struggling. So I get it. I understand because I run through the same stuff. But let's get our eyes on the Lord. Let's, let's, let's get our eyes on, focused on Him. And, and, and let him be glorified and let him take all the glory and all the credit. So thanks for joining me this morning. Hey, if this has been encouraging to you, would you guys do me the favor of sharing this? Uh, one of the ways that Facebook does this to reach people is that if you guys share it or comment on it or connect, link it to, uh, you know, something along that line, um, more people get to join us and, and take part of this. If you know, if it's if it's just something that God's doing with just us, then that's great. I'm totally okay with that. But if you feel like it needs to go out and other people could be encouraged by this, please remember to share uh, and to pass the video along. So hopefully the feed was okay tonight, today. I'm, I'm sorry, Steve, if, if you were dropping out or if it was on my end. Um, I was struggling all morning to get this thing to work, and uh, I thought I had it, so I probably should have went off my phone anyway. But Lord bless you guys. Have a great day. 
And um, I just pray that my prayer for you, and it will be today, is that you hear from the Lord and that he encourages you in all that you do and uh, that you can glorify him along the way. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you on Thursday morning at uh, 10 o'clock right here. Bye.